This work is part of MFMED for establishing metrology standards in microfluidic devices, a European project financed by Ampere. I am Elfie Töpfer from Microfluidic Chip Shop, and I'm going to talk about interfacing of microfluidic devices. In the first slide, you can see a variety of microfluidic chips, all from different providers with different functionalities and different microfluidic structures on them. But no matter the functionality, if it's organ on a chip or if it's, a, for example, point of care, they all have more or less one thing in common, and that is that they need a connection to the microscopic outside world. That means we have to introduce a sample, we have to introduce reagents, or we have to apply a medium flow, for example, for organ on a chip. And that is why at MFMED we have thought about minimum requirements that um, connections and interfaces of microfluidic chips should fulfill. And these requirements we have basically grouped into minimal requirements that are absolutely necessary and extended requirements that are nice to have, especially for some experimental settings. In general, a microfluidic setup and the microfluid interface should withstand the pressure of two bar and should run at temperatures from 4 to 50 degrees Celsius. Um, they should be suitable for a flow of one microliter per minute to 100, 100 microliters per minute. And as I said, that is the absolute minimum requirement. In a lot of cases, actually, flow rates go a little bit higher in microfluidic experiments. They should be suitable to be worked with uh, water-based fluids containing any biomolecular matter. They should have a low internal volume so that not so much uh, space is actually taken up by the interface itself. Um, and they should have no dead volume, so no uh, dead ends um, where medium that is introduced or samples that are introduced are actually uh, lost. Um, they should have a low flow resistance resistant the self because you don't want to add re, uh, resistance just by the connection. Um, you want to have a limited risk of biofilm formation. Um, you should only be using biocompatible materials as materials that are actually uh, come in contact with samples and so on. Very important is that they should be leak tight um, and are not of a material uh, that can leach out or are connected with a material that can lead out into the sample and um, in that case contaminate your actual experiment. Um, of course, things should be affordable and uh, the supply chain should be sufficiently covered and they should be somewhat pull resistant. Extended requirements also uh, contain that they can withstand pressures that go higher than the two bar we have talked of before. So we can go up to, for example, seven bars and can withstand temperatures that go up to 120 degrees. When is that important? Uh, first of all, for example, for sterilization, but experimental wise, that can be, for example, be the case if you run PCR experiments or so on. Um, then, of course, the chip should not only be able to withstand 50 degrees. Um, you should not require any a specific tooling or uh, fancy things to actually make the connection, um, the connection, and uh, it should be suitable for gases or other medium like oil and some solvents. That is the case for some experiments, as I said. So they, these are the extended requirements. Again, sterilizing them would be kind of nice, and uh, we should have a. Uh, flexible for tube size and usable for soft wall tubing uh, could be one uh, requirement as well. So let's have a look at the different microfluidic interfaces that can be implemented in microfluidic devices and that are used by the microfluidic community currently. We have two different uh, large groups, so to say. Um, one is the the big group of the top interfaces, so basically interfaces that come uh, into the chip in a perpendicular manner, uh, manner in relation to the microfluidic channel network. And then we also have side interfaces, so connecting the microfluidic chip from, um, from the side. In most chip that, that you will find uh, on the market, these are uh, top interfaces. That is, has to do, for example, with um, manufacturability, among other things. 
And for those top interfaces, uh, for example, they can be clamped with a gasket or with an O-ring. They can be integrated, so they are already part of the uh, of the microfluidic chip. Um, so this interface could be a mini lure or a lure interface, a host barbs or olive, or threaded ports are also integrated interfaces uh, that can be, for example, made with injection molding or with 3D printing. Um, a somewhat semi-integrated version would be a glued interface onto the chip that are more or less the same things as the, the totally integrated ones. So that could be mini lures and lures uh, and nanoports or captides, for example. And then you have the possibility to have no connectors as such, but you just have a through pole, uh, through uh, hole interface, meaning just an open port, uh, a push in where you can directly introduce um, your uh, your tubing. That is the case, for example, in a lot of the PDMS devices that are used in the academic sector mainly. So as you have seen in the previous slide, interfacing in microfluidic devices actually is a relatively large topic with a variety of things to consider. And if it's that way, how can things actually be standardized? Well, the first step for standardization is actually to know what you're talking about if you're talking with other peers about microfluidic things. And this is why we have introduced uh, the ISO standards, for, uh, international standards for microfluidic vocabulary at MFMED. Um, those ISO standards, for example, contain uh, definitions like first level connections, uh, direct connections, so that would be a connection enabling liquid transfer between two parts through direct contract or several level uh, connections. Um, as opposite in, uh, in an indirect connection, connecting enabling uh, liquid transfer between two parts using tubes, syringes, O-rings, gaskets, and so on. And these are just two examples for definitions that are set within those new ISO standards. Another ISO standard that we have worked on is the ISO standard for microfluidic devices interoperability requirements for dimensions, connections, and initial device classification. And in this ISO standards, you would, for example, find that in case you have multiple interfaces on one microfluidic device, there is a defined um, pitch uh, between those uh, inlets and outlets, um, and that should be a multiple of 1.5. And a multiple of 1.5 would be 4.5 millimeters, which is the pitch that is compatible with microplate format of a, a 384 well plate. And a 9 millimeter pitch is actually the pitch that you will find on a 96 well micro tighter plate. So things are uh, in relation uh, to other standards uh, that are already established on the market. Uh, still, all the things that I've talked about, you will see that there is no single standard that is currently applied by users and industry when it comes to interfacing of microfluidic devices. But certainly standard considerations and terminology for microfluidic interfaces is beneficial and should be implemented. These standard considerations have been worked on by the entire MFMED team. And here you can see the different MFMED team project partners, universities and companies. With this, I would like to end my presentation. Thank you for watching. Um, you can find more information uh, on the topics that uh, I've talked about in the links uh, on the video description and on the project website MFMED. EU. Uh, my name is Elfie Töpfer and I'm from Microfreak Chip Shop. Thank you for watching. Bye bye.